Okay, you start. Okay, we're going to tie this Jiggy B. And the Jiggy B is a one of these, probably a contraband fly because it's using some of these uh, non-conventional fly tying materials. Uh, one of which is this scrubby yarn, which uh, you can get at Walmart or some of the fabric stores, and the other is this parfait yarn. And uh, same parfait yarn. I don't think you can get it at the uh, at the uh, Walmart anymore. They used to have it, but I think they quit carrying it. But the fabric stores do have it. And it's uh, it's a pretty neat material. It's kind of uh, like dubbing the, the yarn is, and the, the scrubby yarn is a little bit like Estaz, a little bit like the Estaz, but it's got the uh, uh, one side as opposed to wrapped around the whole thread. So this is an Eagle Claw 570 jig hook with a, a bead on it. The bead is a Hobby Lobby 3.2 millimeter gold plated bead. Um, and it's, um, I think it's Halcraft, but I'm not sure. It's, uh, what does it say in the instructions? Ah, no, it's Metal Gallery. And it just slips over the three, the, the 570 jig hook. This is a size 10 jig hook, and it forms the, uh, the, the base for the, for the fly, the Jiggy B fly. So we'll wrap the thread around the um, around the hook shank, and then the first step is to put a piece of foam. The foam will be the counterbalance for the to float the the, the uh, tail section of the fly upward because the weight of the hook is too much and it pulls it down. If you want it to be vertical, I mean horizontal. You need to put a piece of foam on there to counterbalance. So we'll put a piece of foam as the first step, which will be the counterbalance for the fly. And we'll have to trim that in the last step to get the right amount of counterbalance. This is just plain old 1 16th, 1 16th, uh, I can see I need to move over there. 1 16th inch thick foam and it'll be on the hook for our counterbalance to float the tail end of the hook upward. All right. And then the next step is to tie on a uh, piece of rubber leg material which is, in this case, bungee cord, because it's a little bit sturdier than the, than the flat. Uh, uh, <laughs> we're going to tie another one, a flat one, so between the cracks. The, we'll put the uh, the rubber leg material or bungee cord material to where it straddles the tail end of the straddles the uh, the foam piece at the end. And then I'll wrap it forward. And then the next thing will be to put on a piece, a strand about four inches long of the of the sparkle yarn, scrubby yarn, and tie it in and let it dangle off in between the the hook and I mean uh, in between the strands of rubber leg material. Wrap it forward, and then a piece of parfait yarn, which will be the underbody of the fly.
this is not my fly tied bench, so it's a little klutzy setting this thing up to tie on this thing for this camera. But I'll wing it. Okay, so now the uh, the underbody material is there. I'll wrap this forward, and then we'll wrap the body of the the underbody material forward. This stuff is like I said before. This stuff is like dubbing. It's got that fine, um, and now you know why I put the the uh, tackle pliers that just slipped. The the dubbing, you can see where it slipped off the edge right here. This, there's the center core strand string strand, and it just slipped right on off when I was holding it, so that's why I said if you if you buy this stuff and use it, you're probably going to want to use the hackle pliers to wrap it. Okay. I should have done this for the first one. I can see better from the vertical side. Tie off the. I'll tie in the material at the head, at the bead head. Hey, Randy. Yeah. You need a new vise. You need one that has a material uh, spring on it. It'll hold that material back, so we'll keep getting. Were you in the, were, in the of this discussion that uh, Sydney was talking about? I need a new vise discussion. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, you're dittoing what he already said, but now you gave it a second reason. So, all right, so I just broke my thread off. So I will have to tie it in. Took me a while, but I got it. All right, so let's go back to the putting this on there. I'll trim it up later. What color thread are you using? It's a nylon. It's a uh, kind of a gray nylon thread. That stuff is great. I love it. That's, it does a good job on I just all the jitter bees I tie and all the other all the other flies. It's it's a it's just a perfect color for most flies. All right. So then you take the uh, material. The sparkle yarn, scrubby yarn, and you wrap it forward, and making sure that the the filaments are pointing in the backward direction because it's uh, um, if you don't do that, it's going to wrap on top of it. So let's try that again. There we go. There we go. This one's working better than the other one. There we go. There we go. This would work perfect. And then when you get to the front, just wrap it off and tie it off. So do you think it's the color or the new features that you added to this fly over the well, jitter I think it's the color in October. This October trip was the color, but I don't think it's the the uh, the other is to be determined. The feet, the, the the shape of the. I mean, the colors in the spring. We're gonna find out when we go in April because I'm gonna try a different color. I don't think the white is. Well, I don't know. The white might do okay. It did before. Uh, so who knows? It may be good all year round, but. All right, so now that's tied in there, and I can cut off the thread. And then the last step would be to take this uh, this fly and trim this piece of foam here, trim the foam piece to a section that's probably about the size of a BB while suspending it in water with a loop uh, using regular sewing thread, something that's real limp that will allow the, the fly to maintain buoyancy I'm sorry, 
maintain uh, orientation without being influenced by a stiff tippet material. And this one is, this one's been balanced, so you can see this one's got like a BB size tail to it to make the proper uh, counterbalance. But Did you add red you tips get, on that one too? I put the red tips so that I would know that it's my pattern fly that, that's got the shape, that's got the <laughs> the right size tail. It's, uh. it, was, it, has nothing, it has nothing to do with the fly and, and the tips, although I don't know, maybe the fish might like the red tips, but... I wanted to find one that gave me a starting point of how much foam I needed to keep, and so I put the red tips on. I'm surprised you saw that on there. So, Anyway, Jiggy B. It was catching so many fish, Dugan thought it needed a name. So I said, well, it's not much different than a jitter bee. It's just it's got this frizz material, and it's more of a jig-like uh, jig -like orientation with this uh, um, sparkle yarn. So Have you tried wrapping them both at the same time? Did I what? Trying wrapping both yarns at the same time. That's what I was going to do next with the with the jitter bee. Right. But Lynn wanted to tie me to tie this one so he could record it. Right. So. Well, now we want to record the jitter bee. You want to record the jitter bee, Glenn? Yeah, we are. All right, Jitterby, here's the hook. The Jitterby is on an 80, Eagle Claw 80, has a pretty wide bodied hook, so you, it's got a, a the four millimeter gold plated bead on it, or I don't think they use gold anymore. They used to use uh, 16, 24 uh, or 24 karat gold. Now that they're some other kind of material, so I'm not sure they're as resilient as the original gold beads were, but you can also get those at uh, uh, Hobby Lobby. But the key is they're metal plated. They're not plastic beads. And so the jitter bee on this hook, uh, if you're using the, the size uh, 8 hook, it's a medium chenille. If you're using the, the smaller hook, then the, then the uh, uh, micro chenille does better. It's the, the smaller size 10 hook. It's just too small for that medium chenille. I try to get three wraps, three paired wraps on the, of the jitter bee with, multi, with two different colors. So we'll get to that next when I get things. All right, so then I'm going to do um, the first thing on the jitter bee is to tie the, the tail material in, which once again, this bungee cord works good. It's a Got a good, it's pretty strong compared to that um, skirt material that you buy at the at the um, fishing departments in most of the stores. Get one, I got two strands here. I'm gonna go with it like this, and then I'll either cut a piece off or leave it. All right, so tie the um, return material to the curve. I like to go around the around the curve because the the fly rides hook eye up, and so if you go around the curve, then you'll have a little bit of a 45 degree angle to the uh, to the uh, hook. Glenn, I thought you tied a knot to help the uh, material. That works pretty good. Uh, I, I do the figure eight. I try to tie a figure eight around the hook to keep it one on each side of the hook shank. And then I wrap it forward. And then I'll take the, the red and the black. <clears throat> the red and black parfait yard. <clears throat> OK. 
Okay, now, if I remember this, I want... I like the black in the front. Some people like the black in the back. I like the black to be up against the bead right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the black facing me, and I'm going to put the red on the back side of the hook. If you like it the other way, switch it. Switch the colors. Tying them both side by side to the hook just before the tail of the jitter bee. And then when I get to the end, I'm going to tie the black which is in front of me a little bit closer to the front than the red. That way when I when I do the pairing and spinning it across around the hook, the red will be behind the black. And then I'll go to the front, go back to the front after I've done that. So then I'll take the two strands. Now that i got the red in the back a little bit past the black, I'm going to pair them and, and wrap them together around the hook shank and squish them as I can to where they're around the body and then I'll tie the the jitter bee head, uh, I mean tie the, uh, the thread to the jitter bee just behind the gold bead. And I'll trim off the excess so I can get that final wrapping going. Try not to cut the doggone thread again. And I did good. And then I usually put about enough wraps to build up a little bit of a neck behind the bead. So that it gives it a little bit of a indentation there. And then I'll wrap the thread with the whip finisher and finish it off that way and then put the um, the anti-brim stuff on. you got to put the anti-brim stuff because the brim needs a little bit of a chance if they, if they can, you know, you don't want to catch them all, all right? So you got to put a little bit of anti-brim stuff on there so you can, you know, at least have some sort of control. And then cut the thread. And that's it. And so there's a red and black jitter bee with that parfait yarn. And you can see it's got a nice neat little fork tail there. And it's got the it's got the three pairs, red, black, red, black. Um, actually this one looks like it might have four. Hey, maybe that parfait yarn gives you an extra pair. Whoop, dropped it. That's how long you anyway. like the tail? Huh? That's how long you like the tail? Uh, it's a little bit too long. I think I would trim it. Nice close, but um, if you, the problem with the dog on tail being so long is the brim bites the tail and you don't bite the thing. So, I might have trimmed it a little bit too much, but that, that'll that work. I probably, probably would keep it a little longer than I trimmed this one. But you see how the, the tail points at a, like a 45 degree? The, the, the jitter bee rides like that. That's how it rides. So if you put the tail at a 45 degree angle, then it's going to ride a little bit more or less parallel to the bottom. So. Like a faux jig hook. Yeah, exactly. So. Anyway, that's the jitter bee with the parfait yarn. So. But the only problem with parfait yarn is think about how long it would take you to use something like that. <laughs> that's the kind of thing you want to buy one and share it with about an army of people. Anyway. Very so good, Randy. Next? All right, well, good. I hope my, uh, my delay of game penalty wasn't too bad with messing up on the thread breaking. That happens. <laughs>